Good morning and happy Sabbath, everyone. Welcome to Seventh-day Adventist Church, New Life, here on Fifth Gong Avenue, Nairobi. Indeed, it's a bright Sabbath morning, and we thank the Lord for giving us another opportunity to serve him and to listen and to hear from him. Uh, it is my hope that you've had a blessed week and uh, that you've been blessed more especially by the 10 days of prayers that we've been having and which is culminating today. With me here is a team of panelists uh, with whom uh, we are going to attempt to uh, uh, understand uh, today's uh, lesson. Uh, this week we have been uh, having a very interesting discussion, a very interesting study. And uh, just before we begin, I'd like to make the following announcements. Uh, we are going to have two types of audiences. We're going to have the online audience, which uh, is going to be led by us here on the panel. And we're going to have the in-person audience, and that is the, those of us who have been able to come to church today. And so please, uh, if you're in church, if you're in the sanctuary right now, feel free to join any, any, any lesson class. There are going to be several classes. Um, as we speak, we should be dispersing to your classes right now. Um, uh, as you come in, feel free to join any class that has uh, a small number. When the class is already crowded, you can uh, feel free to join a smaller class um, uh, so that we all get the blessing. As that is going on, uh, I hope the superintendent is going to help facilitate that. As that is going on, I would like to introduce my panel. But before I introduce them, I'd like Sister Liz to uh, lead us in a word of prayer. Then we go straight into the introduction. Let us humble ourselves and pray. Eternal and most gracious Father, King of kings and Lord of lords, Almighty God, we thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you, Father, for this opportune time that you have given us, O Lord God, that we may share in your word, O King of glory. We pray, Father, that may your Holy Spirit be with us, O King of glory. May you open our hearts. May you give us understanding. And in all things, Father, may your name be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, Sister Liz. And um, without much ado, I would allow every panelist to just say their name, and then we continue. Starting from my left. Good morning and happy Sabbath. <coughs> Good morning and happy Sabbath. My name is Bore Martha. Welcome. Thank you, Martha. Happy Sabbath. Happy day. My name is Liz Ochieng. Thank you, Liz. Thank you so much, Brother Brian. Um, uh, we continue to welcome you. This week we have been studying under the theme, The Promised Son. And uh, the whole quarter we will be looking at the book of Hebrews, particularly the last day's message in the book of Hebrews. And so today particularly we are going to dissect the promised son. There is a son that was promised to the world to various generations of the patriarchs and the fathers of faith. This son was manifested later in life. Some of them, like Adam, when Adam first fell uh, into sin, you know, the Lord God promised that through his son, um, his offspring, the devil would be defeated and salvation would be brought to the world. Adam, when they first bore their first son, uh, Cain, they were so eager and they thought this would be the person to deliver the world or to deliver them from the bondage of sin. But they were wrong. We went to the generation of uh, Abraham. He was Chuk promised Chuk a great Chuk nation Chuk. and he was promised that through his seed the world would be blessed. But he did not see, live to see that come to pass. The same was given to David. And we see these successive generations of patriarchs uh, coming and this son is not coming forth. At last, we see Jesus Christ, who is also described as the seed of David, uh, you know, the lion of the tribe of Judah, coming as the savior of the world. And we realize that, uh, that ultimately, God had planned that his own son would be incarnate into the world and would come to save the world from 
the sins. And so um, this week we are talking about uh, a theme that surrounds Jesus Christ in various ways. We are going to try to understand the various roles that Jesus plays as the Son of God and the Son of Man and the significance of that towards our salvation. And in these very last days, you know, previously, Jesus, uh, God had spoken to us through the prophets and through the patriarchs. But in the last days, the book of Hebrews t tells us that uh, the Lord God now spoke, you know, through his son. I want us to go into that. But before we go into that, Sister Martha, could you kindly read for us the key text or the memory verse of this week? It's, in, it's found in the book of Hebrews chapter 1. Hebrews chapter 1. And verse 2 and 3. Hebrews chapter 1. <clears throat> verse 2 and verse 3. What does it say? 2 and 3. Bible says, Has in these last days spoken to us by his son, whom he has appointed heir of all things, through whom all he made the worlds, who being the brightness of his glory, and the express image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power. When he had by himself purged our sins, sat down at the right hand of the majesty of on high. Amen. This same son is the heir of all things. Mark this. It is through him that God made the whole world, the universe, and through this son, this sun is also the radiance of God's glory, you know, or the brightness of God's glory. And it is, he is the exact representation of his being. So in these last days, Sister Martha, now that you've read it, just uh, continuing with that momentum, what would you comment on the, the, the fact that uh, the Lord chose to speak to, through his son in these last days, and especially in our generation? God himself in the past spoke to us through the prophets and right now God himself is speaking to us through his son Jesus Christ which gives us the idea of the fact that the last days begins with Jesus as a fulfillment of God's promise the promise that uh, brother Morris has already told us about uh, God himself said he will bring a seed to us and the seed himself is Jesus Christ. This promise of God is a promise of victory over sin of disobedience that we see happening in the book of Genesis uh, when man fell after sin. And uh, when that happened, in the same uh, Genesis chapter 3 verse 5, we realize that after the fall of man out of the sin of disobedience, uh, God puts enmity between the woman and the serpent who tempts the woman. And God also puts uh, the enmity between the sin of that particular woman and the serpent. And yet God is continuing with the promise of installing a kingdom through a king, Jesus Christ, who comes as a deliverer to deliver the same man who has fallen out of his glory. So he provides an ultimate victory, even in these last days, and not only those ancient days, through that very expensive gift of Jesus Christ as his son. So it is a, a promise that lasts, not only in the ancient days, it is a promise that lasts even to the last days that we are living in, and the latter days, which actually uh, connotes the idea of the future, the future days. It's not about the time past, but it's about the future in these last days. In the days that we live in, as we look forward to the coming of Jesus Christ, what is the promise that we're looking forward to? It's a promise of ultimate victory. It's a promise of salvation that Christ Jesus has given us, that God himself has given us through the resurrection of his son, Jesus Christ. And he promises resurrection even at that time then. And this is fulfilled in the resurrection of Jesus Christ himself. Amen. Thank you very much, Sister Martha. One question for you. What is there a difference in the message? What did you comment on the message? Because the Lord God spoke to us in uh, sundry times or in the Old Testament times through the prophets. And Paul, speaking in his time, because Paul wrote the book of Hebrews, he, he comments and says that in these last days, in his time, he was referring to his time. 
which, which, which tells us in a sense that Paul believed, you know, that the last days started from the coming of Jesus, which was his time. What would you comment on the message? Was the message of the Old Testament different from the message of Jesus in the New Testament, or uh, was it the same? The message is the same. Uh, what happened in the olden days or in the prophetic time is that the, the message was more prophetic. But right now, the message is, uh, is a fulfillment. In the Old Testament, it was prophetic. Right now, in the, old, in the New Testament, it is a prophetic message fulfilled. It is, uh, I want to give an example of the fact that you have a messenger and uh, you give a package or a message to a messenger to take it to a boss in your office. And uh, that is a medium of, uh, you know, sending the message, transition of the message. But now you have a chance of being able to see your boss directly and giving him that particular message. So it is the same message, but the medium of transmission is what uh, we see as a difference here. But right now we have more advantage because we are able to speak to the Son, Jesus Christ himself, who is also God. And therefore, whatever it is, our petitions and all that we have, he is able to take it up himself directly from us and not through the prophets like it was in the ancient time. Perfect, perfect. The, the fulfillment, Jesus is the fulfillment of the Old Testament message. Because we see the prophet Isaiah giving us a, a prophecy and several other prophets giving us prophecies of the coming son. And uh, when he comes, his message is the fulfillment of the Old Testament message. And it must be one and the same, because God never lies, he never changes. Sister Liz, God speaking through his son. You know, there are families where uh, the father and the son, or the parents and the, the offspring uh, are not in unison. And sometimes when, uh, when I come, for example, and tell you that I'm representing my father, in this particular capacity, uh, you may have a problem with that because you know the relationship between me and my father, and you may want to verify <laughs> if, I, if what I'm telling you is indeed true. What would you comment on God choosing to speak through his son, Jesus, and uh, allowing his son to be the fulfillment of the Old Testament prophecy, as opposed to any other celestial being like angels who are also sinless and who are created beings? Okay, uh, thank you so much, Maurice. Uh, in God speaking through his son, if we, if we look back in history, we see that at the beginning of time, God would speak to the, uh, to the patriarchs and the, and, the, and the forefathers. We see that in, in most times, God uh, spoke to Abraham concerning his family. Then later on, God spoke to the prophets and the kings. We see God speaking. During this time, it's, it's the time that uh, God gave his, the Ten Commandments to Moses. So once Moses gave the Ten Commandments to, to, the, to the people, uh, at one point they became rebellious. They wanted leaders, so they had judges, they had kings, and they also had prophets. So in this time, God spoke through the judges, through the kings, and through the prophets. We can see at one time, uh, Daniel is speaking, is speaking to God, telling God that he desires to build him a temple. Then God tells that, uh, that David that David will not build the, King David, he will not build the temple, but Solomon will build the temple instead. And then once the temple is built and is about to be dedicated, we also see again King Solomon speaking to, to God. And uh, during that time as well, the prophets also uh, sh uh, were the messengers that were sent by God to convey his message to the people. This was about a thousand years. Then the last of the prophets that were able to, 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 to be used of God, to speak the word of God, were Ezra, Nehemiah, and Malachi. So after Malachi, God kept silent for a while. About 400 years, the, the, the Jews did not hear, the Jews in the New Testament did not hear anything from God. And then God sends his son, Jesus Christ. Uh, why is Jesus Christ's message superior? Or why is, is, uh, is uh, God using Jesus superior to these other prophets? Because Jesus is the son of God. In John 
in John 1, 1, it says, in the beginning was the word. And it tells us, John 1, 2, 3, uh, through the word, everything was created. And when we go deeper into, into the Bible, we see that Jesus is, uh, is the creator. He created. And uh, sig the significance of Jesus is that it was him that was spoken of in the Old Testament. And now in the New Testament, he comes to fulfill that which was spoken about him. And Jesus' uh, message, or Jesus as the Son of God, his message is superior because he is the Son of God. He is the revelation of that which had been spoken of in the Old Testament, and he fulfilled it. Thank you very much. He is the fulfillment of the revelation that was spoken of in the Old Testament. Brother Brian, allow yes. me to jump to you. I yes. know I'm supposed to be talking to, to Martha, mm -hmm. but allow me to jump to you Yes. Um, to, to help us understand Christ Jesus mm -hmm. as a creator of the universe. Mm -hmm. um, and, 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 and why would the creator of the universe also be the savior? What made him fit mm -hmm. to be the savior? Um, for you to be the savior, you really have to come and experience that which you are, you, you are saving. You have to come and uh, be like them and, and, and feel the pain, feel, feel how they, they, they feel. And even when you say that I am your redeemer, they'll be able to accept that. They'll be able to know that this uh, God that is saying, I am your redeemer, has experienced, he knows uh, what, what I'm, uh, I'm, I'm feeling what I'm going uh, through. So it was, there is no way that this would have been accomplished except that God had to come and be born through Mary and be, and be like us. And that is when he can qualify to be called what? A redeemer, our redeemer and, 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 uh, and savior. Otherwise, uh, people would argue, no, he doesn't know how we feel. He doesn't know the, 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 the power of temptation. He doesn't know how to fall in sin and how it feels, the guilt and all that. But yet he came to show us it is possible to live uh, over temptation. It is possible to live a sinless life. And that is why he qualifies to be what? To be our savior and redeemer. And at the same time, to be God. And so when God says that, uh, when Paul was talking about uh, what we have seen in these uh, uh, last days, what really ran into my mind when I saw the prophets, most of them were saying in the latter days, mm -hmm. in the latter days, mm -hmm in the latter days. But when Paul now says in these last days, he's, he's bringing a distinction from the other prophets who are just pointing always to the what? To, to, the, the, future, to, to the future. Days, yeah. but now Paul says these ones. These, these are ones. Days in which we live. In which we live. Yes. That God himself yeah. has come down. So when Christ came to Paul, that was a fulfillment of what the old prophets were saying in this in the latter days in the latter days yes and just taking you back to the 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 idea or the you know the concept of redeeming mm -hmm. to redeem means to get back to what, get, yes. what belonged to you mm -hmm. what first belonged to you mm -hmm. and then you get it back to you through a ransom or through paying a price you know redeeming we did not belong to angels yeah, yeah. we did not belong to any other created beings uh, in heaven or on earth but to belong to God. Mm -hmm. We are of God. The Bible says that whether we are alive or dead, we belong to whom? To God. We belong to God. Mm -hmm. So he, 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 it is he who created us, who was fit enough to come and do what? Come and redeem us. Um, uh, sticking with uh, the, uh, the concept of redeeming, uh, Brother Brian, yes. I don't know if you have any more comments because we are jumping to that day. Mm -hmm. uh, um, uh, uh, God as the creator, mm -hmm. you know, of the universe. Mm -hmm. Would you want to comment about uh, the creative ability of Jesus, uh, the creative power of Jesus, and, uh, and 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 help us understand it better? Mm -hmm. Okay, the creative power of Jesus. Uh, maybe in the in there is a text. Uh, uh, the author, the lesson author, used there that says uh, uh, Colossians seventeen, Colossians and it's chapter seventeen, one seventeen, one seventeen. That's uh, and he is before all things, and by him all things what? Consist. That he was before all things, and in him all things consist. Is this? this is Jesus. Jesus yes. This is none other than Jesus. That he was before 
all things. And one time, when the Jews were talking about Abraham, you know, our father, and then Jesus made this statement, this astounding statement, that before Abraham, I am. And that is when they wanted to, 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 to stone him. Because that, that statement he made was a very, very, very powerful, powerful statement. That before Abraham was, I am. So to, to Jesus existed before. When the Father was creating, it was not just an instrument, but it was part and parcel in, in purpose and activity. They were one. That is the mystery of the Godhead that we will never understand. We'll understand it here yes, yes. We will understand it in heaven. Yes, we will understand it in heaven. Yeah. Thank you very much, brother. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I would like us to talk a little more about that because <laughs> it's very beautiful. But allow me to come back to Sister Martha here. Mm -hmm. And um, we are talking about uh, the brightness, you know, Christ being the radiance of God's glory. You know, we, we, we read about the glory of God and, and it astounds us. It's, personally, I am not able to wrap my mind around it because we are told that when Moses went to meet God, on the mountain, and he left the children of Israel down there. He stayed with God for a few days, and then when he came back, his face was radiating the glory of God. His face was so bright that the Israelites could not see him face to face. They had to veil their faces so that they could at least have a conversation with Moses. And we, 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 we read a lot more about, you know, how, how you know, prophet Isaiah, in Isaiah chapter 6, you know, from verse 1. He sees a vision and he describes how the glory of the Lord fills the whole earth and the whole sanctuary. Can you tell us something a little bit about uh, Christ Jesus being the glory of God or the brightness of the glory of God? Um, the lesson says he is the radiance of the glory of God. Uh, being the radiance of the glory of God. Even as I talk about that, before we read the text that tells us more about it, I want to uh, just um, voice what the two, uh, my brother and my sister said, that uh, even in those days when God spoke through the prophets, now he speaks through Jesus Christ. Why? It is because we have to recognize that this Jesus that we are talking about is an all-powerful person. He is more powerful than those prophets. He, he has, you know, he has more capacity. Jesus is greater than the prophets. Why is it is because he is God himself. And because he is God himself, he, all the glory lies in him. And God reveals through Jesus Christ his superiority. That's why we say Jesus Christ is superior. And anything and anybody who is superior, there is some glory in that particular person. It doesn't just come. But again, it reminds us that this radiance of the glory of God, I asked myself, what is radiance to begin with? You know, you, I want to say that radiance in my research a bit means a beaming glow. Something that is glowing. Something that is glowing so much so that you cannot hide its light. And something that is uh, burning from within. So something that is burning from within, there was glory that was burning from within Jesus Christ himself that was placed in him by God. So God is speaking and he has spoken in times past, but he's now speaking through the glory that is within Jesus Christ himself and he's speaking directly to his people so that they are able to experience the glory of, of God through Christ Jesus himself. Things come out of the text that um, we are reading about the radiance of Jesus Christ, which is... Uh, in the book of Rome, uh, Hebrews, the same Hebrews that we read. Let us read that Hebrews again. Chapter 1, verse uh, 3, particular. It says, Who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. Very clearly, we see that the writer talks about the brightness of his glory. The brightness of whose glory? The brightness of Jesus Christ's glory, of course, depicting that bright brightness of God himself because we have learned and we have discovered that Jesus himself is God. The express image of his person. 
what is it in him that is an image that we can see? Or what does his image actually represent? So what does the brightness of his glory mean in this particular point? As I said, it's just about the glow that is just from within, that you cannot put out. It's like that fire that is burning so fiercely that you cannot put out. And no amount of strength gathered together will put it off. And so that is the radiance that is surrounding us. So when we have Jesus in ourselves, that radiance in him is just radiating not only within us, but even the surrounding. And it cannot be put out. The radiance in this particular uh, case means the visibility and the manifestation of the presence of Jesus as light in our lives. As it is told to us from the book of John 8 verse 12. It talks about the presence of Jesus as the light of the world. Your light and my light. That if you have this light, you're able to approach and you know, meet anything with that particular power, with a radiance that is able to uh, shine the way for you. The radiance of his glory is also the brightness of his character. Mm -hmm. You have just talked about uh, Moses and the experience of the children of Israel in Exodus chap uh, chapter 33 and uh, verse 18. Moses asks God, show me your glory. And what does God tell Moses? God tells Moses, uh, he actually promises Moses all his goodness. And truly, all the goodness of the Lord passes before Moses. And then God says in verse 18 of that 33, that my glory is my character. So it means for us to experience the glory of God, we have to look at the character of Jesus Christ and imitate that character for us to experience that glory. When Moses came back from the mountain, as you said, he was glowing. There was some radiance in him. And they could not understand. They, they even wanted Moses to, to just veil himself because that glory was too much for them to behold. If we have the character of Jesus Christ, that glory glows in us. And everybody will be like, that is just too good to be true. That's just too good to behold. God's glory is the beauty that he has. It's the beauty for you and it's the beauty of me. That radiance that the lesson writer is talking about today of the glory of God. It is about the beauty. The beauty which the book of Philippians chapter 2 verse 14 and 15 says that we may become blameless and harmless children of God without any fault. If we take that glory, if we dress in that radiance of God, that glory, that glory of Jesus Christ, we will become beautiful in all aspects. Our lives will be blameless, we will be harmless, children of God, and we will be found without any fault. And Jesus himself uh, came as a visible presence of God and as a light to the world. His glory and his brightness brings, you know, it frightens the wicked because you cannot join light and wickedness. You cannot join light and uh, darkness. You cannot join wickedness and righteousness. So that glory which radiates as the bright light just gives terror to this person or to the evil things that we do or that we meet along the way. Yeah. And if we clothe ourselves in this, Christ Jesus will be able to shine our way. Again, the presence of the glory of God provides guidance to us as his children in the same way his glory provided guidance to the children of Israel. What about the image? The image that is the second thing that this verse is talking about is simply that image of God represented to us through Jesus Christ. He is a stamp. You know the stamp that you used to stamp your files or your very important documents in the office or wherever it is? It is a representation, a true representation, a copyright of what you really want. So Jesus in chapter in John chapter 14 verse 9 says, he who has seen me has done what? Has seen the Father. So if you have seen Jesus, who is a true representation of the Father, then it means you have seen the Father. And Jesus says uh, himself that he is actually the Father. And no one can know the Father except through Jesus Christ himself. So Jesus himself is God's glory. And he is a true and exact representation of God's character. 
So if we look up unto him, he will actually enable us to have that character of God like Amen. Moses did. Amen. Thank you for finishing that uh, point with the word character. Because in further buttressing this point, uh, I just want to ask my sister um, uh, Liz, when you wake up in the morning, how do you know that the sun is up? Of course, by looking. Then when you look, what do you see? That tells you this is the sun. Um, you see the... The, the the sun shining brightly you see the sun rays yes the the radiance of the sun mm -hmm. yeah yeah the brightness yeah. and and how do you distinguish the sun for example from the moon um, i i think uh, the, the the sun's rays they shine brighter while exactly. the moon yeah. does not yeah. so so you are able to just by observing you know, just by observing the sun versus the moon, you're able to tell that this is the moon. This must be the sun. This must be the moon. This is the same way that uh, Jesus Christ helps us to reveal, you know, whom God is. When we see Jesus, then we have seen God. And that's why he was, he was wondering, he was talking in John chapter 14, when he was just about to, to ascend to heaven. He was telling them, who, who, he who has seen me, has actually seen the Father. Um, I want us not to stop there. I want us to go a little deeper because there is the brightness that shines that we see uh, in the physical, the same that uh, the Israelites saw, and I want you, Elder Brian, to comment on this, the same that the Israelites saw when Moses came back. And the Bible tells us that uh, in another passage that the devil is also transformed into an angel of light which just means he has the capacity to transform himself, to disguise himself, you know, as, a, as, 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 as the angel of God or as Jesus himself. A certain writer called Ken McFarland, when he writes the book uh, Lucifer Files, he describes it beautifully. He, he does a holy imagination, eh? sanctified imagination. Uh, he, and he tries to paint a point, to, to paint a picture of when uh, the devil went to tempt Jesus in the wilderness. And in his, in his submission, he says that the angel, I mean, uh, the devil did not go as a horrible looking creature with the horns and the red eyes and scary, uh, you know, appearance. But he went with the brightness of some sort of glory. And when he landed for a moment, he may have confused the Savior that, oh, the Father has, has finally remembered me to send me an angel to help. But when he spoke the first word and he said, if... You know, that condition on doubtful statement that he said to Eve, you know, did God really say that you should not eat this tree? So when he said, if you are indeed the son of God, then Christ designed and knew that this is the enemy. So what would you comment on, on miracles that uh, happen these days? And we've heard of this in diverse parts of the world where, you know, people uh, or some beings try to, you know, disguise themselves as the savior and they come in that shining bright light. Do we stop at the shining bright light or we go deeper into the character? Uh, I like what, uh, what uh, she brought about, that the, uh, the, the glory of God being the character also of God. And, and you find this uh, through the life of Jesus Christ, how he lived and walked among the Jews. You know, his character alone rebuked the Jews. That is why they would not be comfortable in his presence. That is why they, 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 they were uncomfortable because at one time they, they were saying no man spoke as he spoke. No man lived as he lived because he, he lived what, uh, when he says to Thomas, I have been with you and you have not, you have not known the Father. It's like saying uh, all this time this gentleman, this disciple has been around God and he didn't know because his, his very life was the essence of God's, uh, of the Father. And so, you know, in the last days, the brightness, the radiance of the Father will be a terror, as she said, to the sinners. When he comes, that brightness will be a terror to, to the sinners. But what about to the saints? It will be a joy seeing that brightness coming, that cloud coming from what? From the east and, and, and glowing and the brightness growing. For the saints of anticipated is coming, it will be a joy. But for sinners, it is a terror. Yes, as you have said, in these last days, even uh, when Christ will come the second time, the devil will try to imitate. Here he is in the desert, here, there, don't go there. But what are we told? 
if we are grounded in the word of God, no matter what miracle uh, that the devil can do, we can be able to discern and see this is not of what? Thank you. Of the Lord. We know that our God is a miracle working God, mm -hmm. but miracles are not the manifestation of whom God is. Mm -hmm. The manifestation of whom God is, which is the radiance of his glory, is Jesus Christ himself. And that radiance or that, uh, that glory in itself is just the character. Yeah, it's the character of God. So you can shine bright as much as you want, but if your life does not manifest the character that is consistent with that of Christ, then there is a trouble somewhere. And I'd like to, at this point, uh, engage our online audience, even as we come to Liz Begotten. Uh, please uh, feel free to uh, join us and share the link. We are live both on Facebook and on uh, uh, YouTube. Join us and share the link with your friends on WhatsApp, on Facebook, uh, on YouTube as much as possible so that we share these blessings together. Also feel free to um, comment. If you have any comment, we will see it in the comment section on YouTube and we will uh, try to sample some of them here. You also can uh, feel free to you know, ask questions and uh, give your contributions as the Spirit will lead you. Now coming back to the panelists, and uh, we have just a few minutes to wind up. Mm -hmm. Sister Liz, Jesus Christ is the begotten Son of God. And the Bible says that he's the only begotten Son. In that is John 3.16. That Jesus Christ is the only begotten Son of God. Um, uh, in the book of Hebrews, we, we see, um, you know, Paul trying to paint a picture to whom or to which of the angels, he says, to which of the angels did God say today you are my son and today I have begotten you. Okay? Which just uh, means it's a, rhetoric a, a rhetorical way of saying that he never said that to any angel, but he did that to the son. What does, uh, you know, the aspect of, um, you know, Christ being the begotten son of God mean to us today? Thank you. Um, Jesus Christ as the begotten Son of God is very significant to us because uh, in the past, God would, would use the angels, God would use the prophets and uh, to, to redeem, the, to redeem the, his people from their sins. They would have to sacrifice a lamb, but Jesus Christ, the begotten of God, he gave his life for us, each and every one of us, to redeem us. And God says, he's, when uh, John the Baptist was uh, baptizing Jesus, God himself spoke. He said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. He did not say this about any other person, but about Jesus Christ himself. So, and... Uh, after resurrection, we are told that Jesus is seated on the right hand of the Father and he pleads for us. So therefore, we have no other redeemer, we have no other savior than Jesus Christ. Thank you very much. Uh, Sister Liz, uh, Sister Martha, sorry. Was Jesus born? Yes. To beget, was he born? Like, did God give birth to Jesus? God himself did not give back birth to Jesus. Jesus was born of man like you and I, but... Uh, God installed Jesus to be the king and it took Allow him. Allow me to interrupt you. Yeah. Before Christ Jesus came incarnate, before he was born, because we have, uh, we have been uh, uh, enlightened by Brother uh, Brian, uh, that, that Jesus Christ was actually before the prophets. When he was telling him, before Abraham, I am. So we know that he, he, he existed right before the beginning of time. But how did his... Uh, the word begotten here, what does it mean he was actually created, born, or God uh, decided to form him and bring him into existence like some of us believe? The lesson writer tell us, tells us clearly that Jesus was begotten in the sense by God by being installed by him, yeah. being adopted by God as the promised ruler. So he was not born of God in terms of, you know, giving birth, but then God installed him and appointed him and adopted him as his son and as the ruler of the earth. The, the concept which uh, by adoption here means that um, 
he is actually the son of God and actually the true son and legitimate son of God and the ruler of all the nations. The king David became king, executed justice, ruled over the world and executed judgment upon his people. Christ Jesus, who is the ruler and a begotten son of God, is a ruler that is, we are waiting for him to execute judgment upon his people. Uh, maybe if I can say a little yes. bit further, yes. which is also the fulfillment of the verse in the book of um, uh, Isaiah 65, verse 17, which says, the new heavens, the creation of the new heavens, and God himself expects us to have a new creation in us. This fulfillment is done in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. But the promise is fulfilled in the New Testament with a condition. The condition which says, if anyone, hmm? if anyone does what? Believes. So which means it gives us a freedom of choice. Yes, this son has been born. He has been installed as the ruler and as our savior. But is he going to save you just because we are sitting down, we have not unwrapped the gift that has been given to us? We have to take it up with a condition. And the condition is uh, we choose our salvation. The salvation has been offered by him coming as a begotten son of God, Jesus himself becomes our savior. So our salvation is pegged on our choice of what we do with the gift of Jesus Christ, who is the ruler and the son of God himself by adoption. Thank you very much. Uh, so we know that begetting just, uh, you know, signified the, not the beginning of the existence of Jesus, because Jesus always existed, but the beginning of Jesus' rule over the nations. Yeah, yeah I'd like to emphasize on that, yes, because there's, there's a misconception that people use that word begotten, meaning that at some point, Jesus had a beginning. I, I, you know, he had a beginning at some point, he was not there from before, you know, but when at resurrection, Christ, uh, God, uh, at his uh, baptism, God says, a voice was heard from heaven that this is my son in whom I'm well, what? Pleased. You know, what does that, uh, that mean? And when at uh, resurrection, the angel Gabriel, the mightiest of the Lord's host, comes and says, wake up, your father calls thee. You know, when God spoke those words at his baptism, that this is my son in whom I'm well pleased, Christ was standing there as a representative of humanity. And so God adopted him what? As the firstborn of, of, of this race. So in his baptism, God adopted him as our, 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 our elder brother, as the first, firstborn, that whoever believes in him, whosoever believes in him, shall be what? Shall, shall be saved. saved. Or shall have so so when, when it says that Christ was begotten, it doesn't mean that Christ is not eternal. He has been eternal. He has been there before. He was there when he says that I am. Before Abraham, I am. That is, that, 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 that is very powerful. So that Christ, the point. Yeah, that, yeah. that settles the point. And then we can be able to say to those who are saying that, uh, because it is, it is becoming increasingly, most people are saying that you know, at some point, Christ at the beginning at some point. No, he was there with the Father from the beginning. That Thank needs you. to come out very clearly from this, uh, uh, this week's lesson. John chapter 1, yes. Mm -hmm. um, Cindy Ajumbo saying happy Sabbath. Mm -hmm. uh, Sister Eunice Lubwa saying happy Sabbath. Bosco Bika, God bless you. And there is a, a comment from Old Babore who says, um, happy Sabbath and, and, and a blessed one following from Dubai. Uh, thank you very much for joining. Feel free to, um, to, to comment. Uh, Sister Brother Atuhire Arthur says, In the beginning there was the Word, and the Word was with God, and through him everything was created. So from the beginning Jesus was there. Amen and amen. Uh, Brother Kevin Wangi says, Happy Sabbath and happy climax day of... Uh, 10 days of prayer, brethren, uh, delighted and greatly inspired by the thoughts from the panelists. Thank you very much, uh, Brother Kevin Mwangi. Um, uh, we are wrapping up now, and uh, we thank you for having joined us. But before we uh, wrap up, I would like the panelists to say their closing thoughts, starting from uh, Sister Liz here, then we go to Sister Martha, and we finish with the Brother Brian. Then we just wrap up and get the closing prayer. Liz. Uh, thank you, Maurice. Uh, in closing, I'd like us to, to reflect and know that Jesus Christ is our representative here on earth. 
and he's also our savior. And uh, he went through the difficult moments and he was victorious. Therefore, since he's our representative, this also tells us that even us, if we cling to him, we shall be victorious in the battle in this earth. And uh, when he comes to take up his people to heaven, we will be part of them. So in closing, I'd like uh, uh, Brian to help me read uh, Revelation 3.21. Uh, Revelation 3.21. Revelation 3.21 uh, says... To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and am set down with my father in his throne. Thank you. Mm -hmm. That is uh, very powerful. Christ Jesus owning up the throne mm -hmm. and not attributing it to himself solely, but also to the father. And, and just showing that it is a throne that he was installed in by the Father. Mm -hmm. uh, talk of begotten. Sister Martha. Jesus came to reveal the Father in his image and meaning that God is love. And so God wants to save you and I. I hope and pray that each and every one of us will become a part of the kingdom which God himself has restored through Jesus Christ after sin in the Garden of Eden. May the Lord bless us all. Thank you very much. Amen. And Brother Brian, your last yeah. thoughts? Yeah, my last word, what I, I like to emphasize is, is on the creative power of, of God. Because there's this argument that uh, God, uh, only God created and Christ was just an instrument in it. Because if you read the, 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 the Old Testament, especially the verses that were given here, it says, God says in, sing, in singularity, I alone stretches the skies. But when we come to Hebrews, Paul makes it very clear that Christ created he says in these last days god has spoken through his son through whom he created what all the worlds you know through him so we are seeing that him and the father were involved in creation if we struggle with that we'll take eternity that is part of the mystery of the god that we'll understand by and by in heaven and then one thing that is 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 is, is, is very clear in this week's lesson is that Go, uh, Christ as the sustaining power of the creation. And I'd like to finish from Acts uh, seventeen twenty eight, that for in him we live and move and have our being. Wow. In him we live, move and have our being. Viewer, you wake up, you go about your duties, you go to work. It is not by chance, it's not by accident, but it's God's sustaining power that we have all these provisions. The heart spinning, the, the planets holding in their place, the moon holding in its place. It is God sustaining all these things. So let us not be scared that the world was created and the creator went away. No, God is present, he is sustaining all these things. And uh, if you ever doubted that God did not create, when this text says that he sustains all these things, my question then is, what is that if not creative sustaining power of his thank son, you. Thank Jesus you Christ? Thank you very much, my brother. Thank you very much. That reminds me of the tough question that God asked uh, Job. Mm -hmm. Where were you when I was doing this? Where were you when I was doing this? Um, I'd like to close by, um, again, just sampling a few other comments. Mm -hmm. um, Mieta Williams, good morning, and happy Sabbath from France. Arek Mums says, happy Sabbath following from Somalia. Uh, Rosemary Odera, happy Sabbath from Eldoret. Uh, we have uh, Sister Cheryl Majua, happy Amen and happy Sabbath. And many others, uh, Judy Onsomu, Amen, happy Sabbath from Minnesota. Uh, Christine Kaswet, Kaswenu says, happy Sabbath, kindly pray for me. That is noted by our prayer team. Um, uh, as, we be, as we close, I would like to thank you for joining us uh, today and um, uh, for finding an occasion to even participate and be part of the online audience. Indeed, God has revealed uh, so much to us through his son, but our, our, our focus right now is, through the save, is on the saving power and the redeeming power of, of Jesus Christ. And having known that he is the express image of God, we should strive, therefore, to see him, to experience him, 
to, to have a communion and, and, and a relationship with him so that we enjoy, you know, the, the blessings of being in God. May God bless you even as you continue to study his word through the following week. Um, and I'd just like to uh, close with a word of prayer. Shall we believe and pray? Father in heaven, most glorious eternal God, we thank you so much for your glory that you have shown unto us through your son Jesus Christ in these last days. We thank you even for uh, the discussion that we have had. We may not have uh, explicitly discussed it, dear Lord, because of the uh, shortness of time and the limitations of our minds, O oh Lord. I pray that your spirit will come and counsel us and continue to lead us into all truth and to reveal the mysteries and the oracles of heaven to us, sons of men who are fallen. May you forgive us our sins this Sabbath, and may you continue to direct us to your paths of uh, righteousness as we continue to worship you this Sabbath. May you bless our viewers and those who have uh, various needs and various prayer requests, dear Lord, various difficulties in various aspects of their lives, dear Lord. May you touch them and meet them indeed at their points of need. This is my prayer in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen.